the Senate Majority Whip. He's coming to us today from Capitol Hill. So welcome, Senator. Good to have you here. Thanks, David. Nice the, to be with you. The president, as I say, came out over the weekend and then reiterated on Monday that he is going to impose these tariffs if he doesn't get the trade deal. Not that he might, not that he could, but he's going to. Is there a danger that the president of the United States is painting himself into a corner here if we don't get a deal by Friday? Well, there's the deadline for sure. Um, I think the, the, the broader debate about a trade deal with China, um, actually, it was sort of at least talking to the trade negotiators last week, uh, China was sort of backing away from some of the commitments that they made, and I think that's the reason the president felt like he needed to raise the stakes. And so this threat of going to 25 percent, I think, is designed at least to get China back to the table. And evidently, it looks like it has. It's worked in the near term, at least. They're coming to Washington this week to continue the discussions. But in my view, at least, um, you know, it, I hope that we don't have to, he doesn't have to execute on going to 25 percent, because uh, I think at the end of the day, we don't want to end up in a big trade war. But I think it is important to keep leverage on China to make sure that uh, as they make agreements that they, uh, they honor those and that we've got an enforceable deal in the end. And, and I think that's ultimately, at least right now, where the president and his team seem to be headed. Yeah, and I, I must say, Senator, that as I talk to Democrats and Republicans, pretty much everybody agrees we should be putting pressure on China and there needs to be reform in our relations with China when it comes to trade. There's disagreement, of course, on how it's done. And I wonder, is the president of the United States and is the administration listening to you? I mean, you're quoted as saying that you don't think they're, that you're getting through right now on the issue of how they're going about it at the moment. Is that accurate? Do you, do you think you are getting through to them? We've, we've been trying. We had a meeting last week on Thursday, uh, half a dozen of us or so, members of the Senate Finance Committee, which has jurisdiction over trade, met with the president and his negotiating team at the White House to make the argument that we need to close these deals out, get, get USMCA done, uh, you know, drop the, the 232 tariffs on aluminum and steel with Canada and Mexico, uh, not impose uh, auto tariffs with the Europeans, uh, you know, and so there, there's a concern, I think, that, you know, the administration's uh, proposals at least currently are going to be all overall harmful to the economy but I also think the president is very resolute we got that uh, when he made it very clear last week that uh, if China doesn't play ball that he is going to do this and so I think that he believes profoundly and I think the people around him uh, on some level do that he's got to exercise uh, strength the only thing they understand is uh, you know drawing a hard line and, and he is drawing a hard line right now and I hope that it has the desired result because we do need to close these deals out we've got a lot of industries in sectors of uh, uh, industries in this country that are being harmed by this trade uh, these trade uh, tariffs that are already in place and could be further harmed if they ratchet it up so uh, I'm hoping they this deal closes quickly uh, Senator you mentioned the effect on the economy we talked with Rich Clarity, the vice chair of the Fed, earlier today here at Bloomberg. And he talked about this and said it hasn't hurt too much so far, but it could. This is what he said. The trade measures put in place really only had a very modest effect uh, on the economy uh, last year. And obviously, we're hopeful that there is a, an agreement. If uh, that is not the outcome, then we'll certainly take that into account in future policy. So what is the risk as you see it to the overall economy? And for that matter, for the farmers back in your home state? Well, the risk is very real for farmers. Farm income's half of what it was in 2013. The debt's 30% higher than it was in 2013. And the first quarter of this year saw farm income drop uh, to the lowest level, the fastest in, in, in three years. So we've seen some real deteriorating conditions in the ag economy and that's you know that so what you're what you're seeing in the national economy right now are really good numbers strong growth low unemployment uh, great business investment consumer confidence all those uh, metrics are being hit and exceeded but in the in farm country that's not the case and so what we've tried to convey to the president is that we need some good news in agriculture we need to close these deals out the Canadian uh, Mexican free trade agreement uh, would be a good place to start but that if they could get a deal with China that was good for agriculture that would be a huge, I think, step forward and create a lot of forward momentum for the ag economy. But at the moment, um, it's tough out there. And uh, we've tried to make that clear, help the administration understand what a lot of our farmers are going through and how hard it is right now for them to get financing, how hard it is them for them to, to be profitable. Uh, there are, these prices right now are below the cost of production in agriculture, and it's having a very detrimental uh, effect on the overall ag economy, which is, I think, in time will be felt in the national economy. They tell 
tells that the ag economy is only about 2% of the national economy, but I think these tariffs and trade, uh, you know, uh, these sort of fights that we're having right now, the impacts are going to be start, start to be felt more broadly uh, than just in agriculture. As you point out, Senator, it's not just China. It's also the USMCA, the successor to NAFTA, that is pending up there on the hill. And obviously that affects a lot of farmers because of a lot of sales into Canada and into Mexico for that matter. Where, what are the prospects right now of getting that ratified? Well, there, there are two largest trading partners, and we made the point at the White House last week that the implementing legislation that would implement the deal that was agreed upon now that the ITC review has been done, um, we, we need to move forward and, and at least set it up for votes. I think the, uh, the White House is of a mind that they need to sort of work out with House Democrats uh, what they need to have in order to pass it. Um, a lot of our members here in the Senate, Republicans, are concerned about the 232 tariffs on steel and aluminum and that those need to be dropped in order to get an affirmative vote out of the Senate. So I would say right now it's a work in progress, but what we've tried to convey is there's a sense of urgency about this because, at least for agriculture, they want to see some forward progress. And if we get that deal passed through Congress and signed into law by the President, I think that will be perceived out there at least as um, movement in the right direction. But um, I will yeah, tell you that uh, you know, we need, uh, there's a sense of urgency about this. I'm not sure the administration fully uh, grasps, and we were trying to convey that to them uh, this last week. Finally, Senator, it's only 2019, but we're already talking about 2020. And you're quoted as saying that you're actually pulling for Bernie Sanders on the Democrat side. Is that because you're a fan of Bernie Sanders, Senator Sanders, <laughs> or is that because you'd rather run against him than somebody else? Well, I mean, I think in the end, you know, elections are about differences, and there couldn't be greater differences. If Bernie's our nominee, it sets up a great contrast for us. If you look at the economy and what we're, the success that we've had here with lowering taxes and uh, regulatory uh, burdens on business and your, the growth that you're seeing, and frankly, the growth on lower levels of the income scale and the job opportunities that are available to them, the Wall Street Journal observed here last week that it's actually uh, narrowing in, in, income inequality uh, in our economy right now because of the strong wage growth that we're seeing. So, you know, I think that the contrast in policies, uh, the vision for the future would, couldn't be more clear if, if Bernie's the nominee. And so we'll see what the, the Democrat uh, primary voters decide. I think it's going to be a, a huge fight. Obviously, you got about 20 of them out there, but he, I don't, I don't for a minute underestimate uh, his uh, strength, at least with some voters out there. And I think that would set up well for us in a general election campaign.